So I'm gonna go over this dual CP3 kit for a Cummins. This kit is from Pacific Performance Engineering, PPE. I purchased this kit on alligatorperformance.com. So I've got timestamps in the description if there's a particular topic regarding this dual CP3 kit that interests you, you can skip ahead. So regarding the functionality, I've had this kit on here for probably about 10,000 miles. The only issue is this is on a Cummins and I believe this is a, I believe it's a Duramax pump. So uh, when I put this kit on there, I noticed that there was some fuel surging. I'll put in a, a clip right now. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear the surging that I'm talking about. So I think the surging that uh, I just demonstrated in that video that I initially had is due to the fuel control actuator on this pump. So I think if you swap it out, the one that this one comes with, if you swap it out for a Cummins fuel control actuator, it will get rid of that surging. However, I just got my truck tuned this week actually with an MM3 tuning and um, the surging went away. So I am not planning to replace the fuel control actuator, but that's just something to be aware of. If you have this kit and you've got surging, you might need to swap out the FCA for a, a Cummins FCA. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the way this second CP3 pump is mounted. And this is, this is the most important part of this video. You can see here, there's a flange that's actually a part of the uh, engine block that this thing mounts on. Now, initially with this, this, this year truck is a 2003, that's where the transmission kick down is located. You see now it's down here. So the, the kit provides you with the provisions to move the transmission kick down from this flange down here. And so then you're able to mount the second CP3 up top on this flange. If you look at the flange itself, it's only about probably 1.5 centimeters in thickness. So the bolts, there's two bolts, one here and one here, and you can kind of see the, the nut there and the threads of the second bolt coming down. That's how it secures this CP3 pump to that flange. And then there's another bolt over here that you can't see that goes down into the engine block itself. So the kit came with three bolts, and the instructions just tell you to tighten them down. And after about probably about 3,000 miles, that became inadequate. So I was driving home one day and I heard a strange vibration coming from underneath my hood. Unfortunately, I was about to pull in my driveway. So I pulled in and popped the hood and what had happened was all three of these bolts had come loose. And the uh, CP3 pump was leaning forward onto my fan shroud. You can see there where the, the wheel was eating into the fan shroud, but fortunately, the uh, belt stayed on and the uh, CP3 did not fall into my fan or anything like that. Also, the uh, all the lines were still intact and that you can imagine, I was probably only minutes or seconds away from a real disaster if one of these, you know, if the high pressure line had broken or if the thing had fallen into the fan and broken my fan, that would definitely would have been uh, no bueno, so. So here's the remnants of those bolts that came with the kit. You can see that the heads had sheared off of uh, one of them there and I was able to get a chisel and dig this remnant out of the uh, hole. So to fix that and ensure that it doesn't happen again, I went ahead and retapped the threads in the flange and then also in the the hole in the engine block that you can't see and cleaned them out real good. And I bought some longer bolts and I put jam nuts on the bottom of those bolts. So there's two jam nuts there on each one of these longer bolts in the flange. And to the bolts, um, the threaded holes, and also on the jam nuts, I applied this Loctite number 2422 blue thread locker. It has a paste-like consistency, and you see this is high temp. This stuff actually, through uh, uh, heat cycles, actually gets stronger over time. It's probably overkill. Uh, regular thread locker would probably work, but uh, I didn't want to take any chances for that happening again if I was on the road or something like that. So, so if you're going to go with this kit, I'd recommend using some thread locker uh, and, and potentially putting some jam, nut, jam nuts on those bolts just to be certain. 
that it's not gonna come loose. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is the uh, fuel supply line. Chances are, if you need a second CP3 kit, you've probably got an aftermarket lift pump. For example, this is a fast and it's got half inch uh, fuel lines. And I believe the factory lines, the factory supply fuel line is uh, 5 16th and that's what comes with the kit. So if you've got an aftermarket lift pump with a half inch fuel line, you'll need to get a different fitting for the fuel supply right there in the center of the line, a different fitting for the uh, second CP3. And it's called the big line kit. It comes with it comes with a new fitting. You just take the old one out, put the new one in, and also with uh, a segment of half inch hose for your second CP3 pump. And then you see here the supply line goes to the, see the blue hose there, that's coming up from the lift pump. So then what I did was just buy a barbed uh, T. You can see there where the black hose joins the blue hose there. That's So I just teed into the line from my FAS and then ran it to the uh, second CP3. So that'll take care of the uh, fuel supply if you got half inch lines with the big line kit. And then regarding the fuel return from the CP3, the kit comes with the uh, provisions to tap into the factory fuel return line. But one thing that makes this a little bit easier, if you've got a aftermarket lift pump, you're not using your factory lift pump anymore, you can delete it. You see here, this is the lift pump delete, factory fuel filter and lift pump delete by fleece. And you'll see here this black hose, that's my fuel return from the second CP3. This uh, fuel filter delete kit has got a port there that, that's plugged, but you can just remove the plug and then you can use a banjo bolt to just tap into the uh, fuel filter delete. So that way you don't have to cut into your factory fuel return line. And then one modification I had to make, just for orientation here, here's the second CP3. If you look down here on the bottom, you see that, that bar going across diagonally there? That's, a, that's just a support bar that comes with the kit. But if you look here, you see where the bar, you see that blue hose underneath the bar there? That's the uh, fuel supply coming up from the FAS to the factory CP3, which is below the second one. And this bar, the support bar, was impinging on that, sorry, trying to get to focus here, but that bar, that support bar was impinging on that fuel line in a way that you really could not assemble it. If, if you forced it, it would probably rub a hole in that line. So we had to, what I had to do was take that support bracket and just grind out an archway uh, so it could it could go over the top of the factory uh, line going to the factory CP3, or sorry, the, the, the fast supply line going to the factory CP3 there. So that's another modification I had to make to get this uh, kit to go in. And of course, because this CP3 pump is belt driven, the kit comes with a uh, new serpentine belt. You got to take the factory serpentine belt off and put the new one on. And I'll uh, give you a look at the side here. And I'll give you a tip if you're working by yourself on an easy way to get this uh, serpentine belt off and on. It's a half inch uh, drive. And I use this, you'll see how I use this cheater pipe to release the tension on the, uh, on the automatic tensioner to get the belt off. So you can see here, I've got my half inch drive ratchet there attached to the uh, tensioner pulley. And something that makes this real easy, once you get your drive on there, your half inch drive, you can attach it. This is a one inch pipe here, my cheater pipe. You can see here, I just push on the top of the pipe. And you see how it loosens the, loosens the, uh, the belt, so it's real easy to remove. So and the only other issue I had, so the kit comes with this radiator uh, coolant pipe here and it comes with new boots so you basically replace the factory uh, radiator hose that goes there and I had issues with these leaking coolant around the, the top with multiple heating and cooling cycles but I eventually was able to continue to tighten them and readjust them to where it stopped leaking and this one I actually ended up putting two hose clamps on so that's something else you may have to mess around with a little bit but hasn't leaked in a long time so I think I finally got that nailed down and one other recommendation if you're gonna install this kit, at the very beginning, take off your air intake horn. I didn't wanna do it, because it's kind of a pain, so I got through almost the entire installation of this second uh, CP3 kit 
and it was a lot more difficult with this air horn on there. And then in the end, I had to take it off anyway to uh, tighten up the nuts on the high pressure line. So just take it off at the beginning and make it a lot easier. So in conclusion, to hit the uh, high points, when you mount the CP3, definitely use a, some kind of a blue thread locker. If you've got half inch supply lines, you're gonna need the big line kit for the correct fittings. And then also if you've got an aftermarket lift pump and you wanna delete your factory fuel filter and lift pump, uh, not only does it clean it up a little bit underneath the engine bay, get you some more space, but it simplifies the fuel return line. So I, I'd recommend this kit. I, I think it's, uh, it's so far it's been a good kit for me with the exception of the mounting bolt situation. Uh, I've had really no issues. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend this for your Cummins if you're looking for a dual CP3 kit. Hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've got a kit like this or thinking about getting it, if this was helpful to you. And uh, check back. I'm going to make some more videos and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching.